Hi guys, my name is Kurt. Um, I'm going to be walking through the code solution for the spiral numbers problem on CodeSignal. Um, for reference, this is problem 59 on arcade mode. Um, so let's get started. Um, the instructions say that we need to uh, construct a square matrix of size n by n containing integers from 1 to n squared in spiral order starting from top left in a clockwise direction. So if we have the number 3 as our um, input, then we need to create a 3x3 three three square that counts from 1 to 9 like so. Um, I have another example down here for a test case of 5. So if we have 5, we're going to have an, um, a bunch of uh, subarrays of 5 length long. Um, and it's going to count from 1 to 5 and then go all the way around the circle until it hits the middle at 25. Um, so the way that I approach this problem was using classes and object-oriented programming. So if you guys have a different solution, I'd love to hear it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but I'll get started with my solution. So the first thing we're going to do is create a class of spiral matrix um, at spiral and we're going to cons uh, you know, call the constructor and then pass in the size which is going to be the end value of the original function here. Um, so inside the constructor we're going to need a few properties. Um, we're going to need a this.row uh, set to zero and a this.call set to zero and because this is a 2D array these are basically going to be our current coordinates that we're going to be filling in as we go around um, our arrays. So I'll let you know more about that in just a second. Um, we'll need this dot counter, which is going to be set to 1, so that's going to be the starting value of 1 that we assign, and then we'll just keep incrementing it as we move along. Um, we're going to need this dot size to determine how big the array is going to be, and that's just going to be equal to the size. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to do two cool things here. So we're going to use vectors and basically using an array of uh, directions. So this is also going to have um, subarrays, and I'm going to fill in the uh, values here and explain what they are. But basically, they are vertices or ways that we can determine what direction we want to move our coordinates as we go through and uh, loop around the array. So um, it starts from going left to right and then going from top to bottom then from uh, right to left, and then going back up. So um, basically, the first value in each subarray is going to be your row. So it's going to uh, correspond to this. And then the second value is going to be the column. So if we start here, then we want to go in the right direction. So 0, 1 means that we're going to be adding 1 to the column every time. Incrementing our column is going to make us go across the array like this. Um, when we get to moving down the rows, we're going to increment the row instead of the column in our um, when we're calling it, and it's going to force us to go down each row at a time, right? So we're going to go down the rows this way. And then the negatives are just the inverse of that, right? So um, we're going to go left by decreasing the columns instead because we're going to be starting at 9 and then going our way across to 13. And then we're going to be decreasing our rows when we go from 13 back up towards 1. Um, and then the last thing we will need is a directions index. And we're going to set that to zero because we want the direction to start going right. Um, so again, when we access it, it'll be calling this directions at the directions index. So that will be the first value. Um, one more thing we're going to do is call this dot matrix or set up this dot matrix. And that's going to be an empty array. This is going to be our result. And then I put a for loop in here um, to basically push rows into that um, empty array that we just created it as the matrix. So this is going to be equal to the size and then we're going to increment by one, just your typical for loop. And then inside of here we're going to push new rows of the matrix um, or new arrays as rows into the matrix. So we're going to um, instantiate a new array and we're going to make it this dot size and then we're actually going to fill it with uh, the value of zero and that's going to be important later on when I describe how we're going to go across implementing it. So currently, after we call the constructor and the constructor runs, it's going to set up an array of um, n by n, and every single value inside this 2 by 2 array is going to be 0. Um, so there's going to be three methods that we're going to create. One's going to be fill, which is going to basically just populate the numbers inside of the array. The next one is going to be check next coordinate, and I'll explain how this works in a second, but we're going to be using um, the next row and the next column as arguments. And then the last one we're going to do is change direction. Um, so all, we kind of already went through the explanation of change direction, so I'm actually just going to code this out right now. So as we were saying, um, we start at 0, 0, because that's uh, the row and column that we start with. 
and then we're going to go across. Um, and then when we hit past five, when we're going to get to this point, we're going to be trying to access a spot on the array that doesn't exist. So w when we get to like, it'll be um, this dot matrix at zero um, six will be or zero five because it's zero indexed. So when it hits there, it's going to be undefined, and then we're going to need to change directions and start incrementing the column instead. So to do that, all we have to do is set this dot um, direction index plus plus. We're going to increment it by one to move up and change directions or change vertices. And then we have to make an if statement in here to check and see if this dot direction index is equal to, uh, sorry, I like to use strict equals, this dot directions dot length. Because if it reaches the end of the array and past the end of the array, we want it to go back to the beginning so that it does that circular motion of going right down, left up, and then right again. Um, and then that will be it for uh, this. We need to make sure that this dot direction index equals zero in the case where it equals the length, and then it'll just circle back. So back to the fill method. Um, in here, we're going to use a while loop, and we're going to say while this dot counter is less than this dot size uh, squared plus one, and we're doing plus one because we want to make sure that the last value of 25 is included in the while loop. If we just do this dot size squared and it's less than, that won't work. I guess another way you could do it is less than or equal to this dot size. So we could do that. Um, I'll just stick with that. The next thing we're going to do is um, destructuring using ES6. And we're going to create two variables called dRow and dCall. And this is going to be equal to this dot directions at this dot direction index. So again, I've already gone over this, but basically we are taking these values and assigning them to these values here when it's on the first um, iteration of this loop. So d row will be equal to zero and then d call will be equal to one. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, two more variables, next row and next call, and we're gonna destructure those off as well. And inside the array that we're de destructuring from, we're gonna say this dot row plus d row, and then this dot call plus d call. And so again, the next row and the next coordinate basically is going to be whatever these values are, right? Um, so if we start at 0, 0, the next one is going to be 0, 1 because the column is going to get incremented uh, since the decal is going to be 1 over here. Uh, so in the while loop, after we create those variables, we're going to start by saying if this dot matrix at this dot row at this dot column is equal to zero, then we know we're at a place where we haven't, where we know that we're inside of our matrix, but we haven't put a value into it yet. And so what we're going to do is basically just say this dot matrix at this dot row uh, at this dot call is equal to this dot counter, and then we're going to increment this dot counter so that it's the next value in our um, in our circle, and then after that. We're going to do another if check, and this is where we need to use this dot check next coordinate. And we're going to pass in next row and next column. And so this dot check next coordinate is going to be a method that returns us a true or false value. And so all we're doing is basically um, in the while loop checking to see if the next spot in our in our um, 2D array actually exists. So if we're saying going going to the right, you know, right now. So the row is going to be equal to zero, and then we're incrementing the column value, which is next call by one. When we go past um, four, and we say uh, this dot matrix, you know, at zero um, five, that doesn't exist on this array, right? So it only goes up to zero four um, to get to this coordinate. But when we get past it, it's going to throw an error and say undefined. Um, so we're going to do like a bunch of nested if checks inside of this uh, next coordinate, and we're basically going to use this logic, right? Um, so if this dot matrix um, at the next row, and we have to start with the rows first because those are like the overall. So if we're going down the rows, um, you know, we just have to check and see if it's not undefined. If it is undefined, then we've basically gone out of bounds, and we know that we need to return false. Um, the next thing we'll check is if this 
dot matrix at next row next call next row next call is undefined or not undefined I'm sorry I'm using the bang operator then we can say that that's also valid because again if we hit 0 6 then this will uh, log out as undefined but if it is that means that we're inside the bounds of this 2d array somewhere um, the last thing we'll check is if this dot matrix at next row uh, next call is equal to 0 then we know that we're encountering a value that we haven't added yet so since these are all zeros to start if we go anywhere that's a valid spot and it's a zero it means that we need to put a number in that spot otherwise let's say we go around the circle right and we're at 16 our next value is going to be up here because we're still going up and so if it hits that point where it checks next row and next call and it hits the one again since it's not zero we're going to return false and instead of just continuing to go down the next row we're going to break out and change directions. So inside of the, the case where it is true, it's really simple. All we got to do is take the next row, since we know that this is a place we want to put our next number. We just have to assign this dot row to next row and this dot call to next call. So that way, if it is true, if we know that we're encountering a spot we haven't been on before that is a zero and needs to be filled in, then we can basically just replace the current value as the next value and then do this whole part over again. And it will um, reach this spot just as a double check to make sure and then add the counter value into the spot that was the next one. And then it'll move on and move on and move on. So it's basically just iterating through as we fill in all these spaces. So that should be it for our um, logic for the class. And then all we have to do now is instantiate this class so we'll do const spiral equals new spiral matrix and we'll pass in n like I said so n is our size then we'll do spiral dot fill and call that and then once that's populated we have all the values inside of our um, our spiral we just need to return uh, the spiral dot matrix and if we run this this should equate to the values that we're looking for so let's give it a shot and we have an error on line 18, so let's take a look at this. What did I do wrong? Oh, we did next row twice. So this should be next call, it's just a typo. Sometimes autocomplete isn't always predicting the right thing. And there we go, we pass. So we check our examples here for a six. It'll work whether or not we have an even number or an odd number, it'll go all the way around until it hits 36 in this case. And then for this one, we have a value of 7. And so it'll keep going all the way around until we hit 49. Hope that solution was helpful. If you have a different solution or solved it a different way, maybe there's a better way to do it. This is what made sense to me. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool using classes and stuff. So yeah, uh, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Bye.